fellow citizens of the United States, before entering upon so grave a matter as the destruction of our national fabric, would it not be wise to ascertain precisely why we do it? This country, with its institutions, belongs to the people who inhabit it. We are not enemies, but friends. We must not be enemies. In your hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. You have no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. Virginia calls me, and I vow to join her line. Don't send me off without my girl. Please come away, my Caroline. Dear Thomas, have I read you correctly, brother? You have numbered your northern blood with the rebels? Six months' work in Virginia doesn't turn you southern. And now you ask Caroline to join your cause. Her home is here. I know her affection for you is great, but I beg you not to drag her into this. Your brother, Joseph. Oh, Caroline, my brother calls you. And perhaps I should resign. But here's your home, and here's your family. Stay with me, O oh Caroline. O oh Caroline, do you remember how I swore to make you? told me then I had your heart and mine is yours, oh Caroline. I know the world is torn apart where men and devils now combine. But if you'll stay, then you will be my light. Oh, my Caroline. Joseph, I've gone to Virginia to be at least closer to Thomas. With the fighting, I know I shall not see him often or at all. I've enlisted as a nurse to help with the cause and will be traveling with a doctor and his family. I pray for your safety as well, Caroline. Then I'll resign, but still I'll whisper for the blessings God has in store. Oh, Caroline, that you remember the pathway to my door. Before another bugle calls me, no, I Caroline. 
It's not all fighting. We spend most of our time in camp just waiting for battle. We march, dig trenches, play cards, write letters, brag of home and our girls. It seems as if we never were alive till now. Never had a country till now. There are only two sides to the question. Every man must be for the United States or against it. There can be no neutrals in this war, only patriots or traitors. Dearest Thomas, I've enclosed a photograph. I find myself missing your face and thought you might be missing mine. <laughs> I hope it not cause for treason to have a picture of a girl with a northern winning smile. I stay busy enough here with all the wounded. There are moments of pause that I have to myself. I wish I had a piano. I really wish I had you here. Try not to brag too much about your Northern Belle. Yours always, Caroline. She walked me to the send off the day I let her go. If her farewell was easy, she didn't let it show. With each breath, I remember her softness, uh, her smile. I got this far by thinking of the girl I left behind. I could not do with justice the color of her hair, the light little lilt as it bounces in the air. I know she fears the fighting, to which I am resigned. I comfort her if she were here, the girl I left behind. Our spirits high here every day till we're done. When the fighting is over, we'll meet until that time. I'll sleep at night just dreaming of the girl I left behind. If only you could smell her, the smallest hint of rose. The other part is lilac that only summer grows. But every day is summer when at my side I find the pleasing scent that tells me she's the girl I left behind. Onward to glory, we'll fight until it's won. We'll keep our spirits high here every day till we're done. When the fighting's over, we'll meet until that time. I'll sleep at night just dreaming of the girl I left behind. Regale her figure, nor her kisses, oh so kind. The one she gives to only me, her boy behind the line. Oh, I'd still but now if she were here, the girl I left behind. The Battle of Shiloh, Tennessee. We held the line for three days, lost over a thousand men, and forced the rebels to retreat. We then advanced on Mississippi. The expression of American personality through this war is not to be looked for in the great campaign and the battle fights. It is to be looked for in the hospitals, among the wounded. Dearest husband, I took kindly to your last letter. It has been almost a year since our little Andrew's death. I have mourned long enough. Since the Battle of Shiloh, there has been a call for women in the hospitals. The boys lying there seem to thrill at the thought of some female company. We got a new nurse today, a young girl from Pennsylvania has followed her heart after her Virginia soldier, but has been unable to see him, so she made her way to our hospital. She reminds me that there are those in the North who still have a heart. There has been a change at home, and I hope you will not disapprove. I have taken in Private Isaac Giffen, barely 15 years old. 
The doctors were doing nothing for him and they were hopeless for his recovery. It seems as though they just needed to free the bed. Well, he is not hopeless and he has already begun to recover. I am teaching him how to read and write and he is even walking now, although timidly. He does surely remind me a little of our Andrew, your affectionate wife. With every new day, your wounds are fading, though they may never disappear. No constant reminder of battles lost. With every small step, grow stronger, though they don't carry you too far. Soon you'll be standing taller with ease. No step will be too hard. Soon you'll walk off over the hillside, playing as young Your hands will grow strong and find their purpose. Soon you will laugh and play and cheer. The worst now is over, nightmares are past. Find your adventure here. God has provided a way for every hurt, for every pain, for every wound, and each childless day, for darkest nightmares to pull away and be healed. You can heal. We can heal. Dear Mr. President, in thinking of America, 
I have admired her beauty and grandeur. But I am checked when I remember that all is cursed by the spirit of slaveholding. I reproach the North that they fight with one hand when they could fight more effectively with two. Many times I have petitioned you for the privilege to bear arms. I sincerely believe it is your best hope. For a man who does not fight for himself is not worth being fought for by others. For a man who does not value freedom for himself will never value it for others or put himself to any inconvenience to gain it for others. Freedom is what we want and nothing shorter. Did not God create us all equal? God blessed every tree, raised each golden meadow, painted skies of blue, and gave Must rage up in this hymn to see these souls in chains when every cry that reaches ears reminds him of our pain. Then should we just be still, accepting love some fate? God did not intend for us to feel. There are days I cannot count the cannons, and there are days the silence is deafening. I struggle to think Thomas may be among the enemy. While a battle is raging, one can see his enemy mowed down by the thousand or the ten thousand with great composure. But after the battle, these scenes are distressing and one is naturally disposed to do as much to alleviate the suffering of an enemy as a friend. Dearest Caroline, I wish you could have seen the battle we were in just two days ago. This time, the bullets were whizzing around our heads like a nest of hornets. Some of the men were inclined to dodge when the bullets came too close. The captain cried out, Never mind those little fellows, boys. They won't hurt you. But stand steady in line if a ball should come and sweep down every man of you. After we had gone another rod or two, a bullet whistled by the back of my head so close I felt it. I looked around and saw the eyes of the man behind me stick out. I was relieved to see him standing. I am glad to have signed up with the South. These are my brothers. We march on. Thomas. Each word our 
future feels more distant. I don't know the horrors you describe. You've become more certain, loyal to your cause. I still wait for life just as it was. Please don't think I question changed me in your eyes when you lay down your banner when you lay down your gun will you want much more than i become won't you assure me as once you would that one day soon September 1862, the battle near Antietam, Maryland, the single bloodiest day in American history. We lost about a third of our men that day. Again, we were forced to retreat to Virginia. It is good that war is so horrible so we do not become too fond of it. Dearest husband, against my pleading, my little Giffen has returned to the front. I told him that I did not spend these past many months nursing him back to health only so he could bloody himself up again, but he was insistent. He just could not bear the thought of his brothers and friends fighting in this war without him. I could imagine it just fine. I made him promise to write me so that I know he's safe. And he promised. I know in my heart you will not sit idle while distant fighting rages on. But wherever you go, Whatever you see, whether it's safe there or if I agree, know in my heart forever you will be. My little Giffen, Dearest love, do you remember the last time we did meet? 
How I told you that I loved you Kneeling at your feet Oh, how proud you stood before me In your dress of blue And I vowed to you I ever would be true Dearest Thomas, I dread the thought this war may continue for much longer. At night, I dream we are walking through the meadow at home. No cannon fire, no signs of death. And then I wake and remember you are still in harm's way. Brother Thomas, since learning you were also at Antietam, I have struggled with the thought we may meet on this battlefield. I would that we could sit and talk on the porch like the days before you left. I could do without mother singing, but what I wouldn't give for her cooking now. I hope you are well. With communication so sparse, I imagine the worst. If amid the din of battle ever loyal you should fall Far away from those who love you, none to hear your call Often dreams I see thee lying on the battle plain Lonely dying, ever calling out in pain Once let a black man get upon his persons the letters U.S., a musket on his shoulder, bullets in his pocket, and there is no power on earth which can deny that he has earned the right to citizenship. They sold my sisters, two brothers did, they done dragged. My wife from me, right from my bed. Every stride and lash, they lay across my back. Give me pause when I think to attack. Well, I have crossed the 
Jordan, carried in your hands, you have put the promise in this promised land. Now I ask, burden be upon me, let me fight, let me fight to be free. No more suffering, bleeding, dying for me. No more suffering, bleeding, dying for me. I'll go down to my grave for my own liberty. Let me fight. Fight to be free When I think of Jesus Made blind man see He done told him to go and Wash himself clean And for Moses to show him The power of his hand Told him to take my people from this land Now we Lord my Jesus So great a friend As this Moses To make it to heaven Why if he Ask nothing From the likes of me Let me fight Let me fight to be free Suffering, bleeding, dying for me. No more suffering, bleeding, dying for me. I'll go down to my grave for my own liberty. Let me fight. Mm -hmm. Let me fight to be free. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, 
to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Here in the darkness, the moon, my only light. The darkness halts the fighting, but I will not sleep tonight. We loaded each our rifles and fired a thousand rounds. When I thought you might be hit, I prayed my mark not found. don't know why I noticed I've seen so many fall Gray coats torn and bloody They fell against the wall But something in his stifled cry Our guns could not subdue Led me searching and relieved to find He was not you His breath has long since faded There's no life here to save So why do I feel bound To keep my vigil at his grave? He could be my brother There in all the chaos He looked a lot like you I saw behind his lifeless eyes The blue yours used to shine Wondering if they're shining still and safe Well, if you dreamed you saw me Fall beneath my flag Would you not sit this night with me If that was all you had he could be your brother The stars are quickly fading As daylight heals the night I stand upon the battlefield Bathed in breaking light Did we escape the burden Of having here to meet? And wonder if the shot was mine 
that laid you at my feet. But I'll not stop believing that as you fell to die, another soldier kept this vigil, whispered my goodbye. He could be, he could be. Brother Joseph. But your country called you, darling, and I'll ever cheer your way. I'm luckier than most, because I have this chance to say goodbye. While our boys are out there fighting, we can only pray. I was wounded on the third day of fighting, and there's nothing they can do for me. As we strive for God and country, may our brothers see. For mother's sake, I pray you have made it through this conflict safely. It's an awful price we pay for liberty. But for my own, my great fear is to pass to the other side alone. Lay here in the darkness, alone with little light, left with only cries of pain to get me through the night. But somewhere in the darkness, I dreamed someone was here. He sang to me the songs of home to quiet all my fear. And as my soul departed, he took me by the hand and led me through the valley back into that heavenly land. Dearest husband, I have just returned home from the hospital where I have witnessed despair as I have never seen it. The young Pennsylvania nurse, Caroline, has just received word of her soldier's death. She works until she collapses from exhaustion to ignore her sorrow. I know her grief. I still have not heard from my little Giffen, and my heart just aches to hear news. I can only pray for hope.
I cannot describe the horrors we see with each passing day. Even when we march, we are surrounded by death. The earth seems to groan with the dead and the wounded. I am tired and sick of war. Its glory is all moonshine. It is only those who have neither fired a shot nor heard the shrieks and groans of the wounded who cry aloud for blood, for vengeance, for desolation. War is hell. Caroline, if you are reading this letter, then I am gone. I know it may not make sense to you, but I am content with my death. I, I have, have no, no regrets. regrets. I have fought valiantly. Had I known we could not have been together, I would not have asked you to leave your home for the hardships you have known these last years. Joseph thought it was a bad idea. I have always loved you. You will always be the girl I left behind. Thomas. Gazing at the stars Wished that I could count them But I'd lose the place where I began Then I realize Stars cannot be counted Marvel at their Now I look around, countless stars have fallen, lights of blue and gray are fading. I'm among the stars, count me with the fallen, how can I still mourn? Dearest Mother, there is now considerable confidence that this war will not continue much longer. I hope that it will not. The rebels are in a deplorable condition and in some localities are actually starving to death. We are taking prisoners every day and some days we lose a few. Those we take give a sorry picture of matters in rebeldom. They are ragged, hungry, and dirty. I can only think they might have been a friend to Thomas, your son, Joseph. Richmond has fallen. 
a country redeemed and regenerated from the foulest crimes against human nature that has ever seen the sun. What a bright vision of peace, prosperity, and happiness. Dear sister, it has been a long time since I've written you. I'm well. Tell the children that I think of them every day and night. I see plenty of children here. There's a little boy who wears his hat just the same as Herbert used to. I was promoted to corporal in Annapolis just about when they traded our sticks for rifles. When we got to Beaufort, they enlisted me as a carpenter, which I worked at for about three days. And now I am a commissary corporal. I have even been in a battle. We came across a group of starving Rebs on Thursday. They were unarmed and cautious at our advance. I offered my rations to a boy, it couldn't be older than 16. He paused to take it and he smiled. We didn't speak. I just watched him as he disappeared into the trees. It seemed the right thing to do. I lift my eyes and search the heavens Looking for signs of fighting's end I hear the cannons fade But there won't be no victor song Every soul in this land Sing one voice in to heaven I feel the sun washing us clean free from the chains with which we tried we got no captain now except this heart that will lead us on Making us one We must not forget God's mercy leading us Here to see the end of this our fight We walk the picket lines and we are dead Death was no judge of black or white must take our journey down this blood-stained road Walking hand in hand with God our stone He will guide our feet as we cross this land For which both blue and gray atone Us the courage and strength, the loyalty, the fortitude, the face, the lines ahead. Make us as one nation, judge us as one people, make us as one. Make us as The Union Army has left nothing but destruction in its path. They have ravaged this already war-torn land, leaving it desolate. We have been made exiles and paupers. None of the local boys have even come home, and I don't expect that they should. 
This is the first time that I have sat on the porch and watched the sunset in a long while. I think of my little Giffen. He would surely enjoy the air. These have been the longest years of my life. I am returning home with no money, no work, and no brother. Nothing but the confidence of peace. This matter will be settled now. I find my path unclear. I would return to my oranges in Mississippi if I felt it safe, for I do miss this landscape. For now, I'll make our calls my goal. It is a noble cause. Dearest Joseph, I will soon find myself no longer useful here in the hospitals. There are too many dead, and the staff can almost handle all of the wounded without me. I would very much like to see Pennsylvania again. Oh, Caroline, the flowers bloom. I know it will not be the same. Morning for us begins its decline. Can I come home? The summer's nigh and none too soon. Though you strayed, wandered far, lost your way and who you are, there's still the place, it's still your own, ever occasion corresponding to this four years ago, all thoughts were anxiously directed to an impending civil war. All dreaded it. All sought to avert it. It may seem strange that any man should dare ask a just God's assistance in wringing their bread from the sweat of other men's faces. But let us judge not that we be not judged. malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right. Let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle 
and for his widow and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations.